All righty, guys, how's it going? So the New York Giants, the New York Giants end up getting, uh, what's it called? The New York Giants end up getting, they end up getting Fibido at number five, and the draft just worked out perfectly for the Giants tonight. Um, I really love this new regime of Joe Shane, you know, and, and, and the Giants are really letting their guys kind of be themselves. You know, Fibido is, is a big personality, but, you know, Fibido is going to be a great leader, going to be a great guy for the Giants. And you look at the Giants over time and, and the Giants defensive players like Lawrence Taylor and like Banks and all these guys, they, they had personalities. And Michael Parsons was another guy out of Penn State that the Giants wanted very specific personality. But Wink Martindale is going to let his guys, you know, be, be unique and be individuals. And Michael Parsons was fine, even though there was personality concern. Um, so Fibido is a really fun fit for the New York Giants. Um, the Texans didn't take him. The Jets also passed on Fibido um, for Sauce Gardner. So that allowed the Giants actually to get Fibidel, which was great. I think they wanted him all along. And you get a you get an edge rusher now with Ojalari. And then at number seven, that was the easiest pick ever. I wanted Evan Neal the entire time. I was so happy when the Carolina Panthers selected Iquamu because I wanted Evan Neal was my number one tackle. He would have been my number one pick in the entire draft. So you get your number one pick at number seven, and then you end up getting at the fifth spot, you end up getting Fibido and Neal, the Giants absolutely won this entire draft. I mean, because because the game of football should be played in the trenches. It shouldn't just be played on the outside with wide receivers. Somehow all these GMs think it's wide receivers. Jahan Dotson gets selected because he's a wide receiver. Um, you know, Chris Olave, Traylon Burks, and, you know, everybody is going for, you know, wide receiver, wide receiver, wide receiver, wide. The entire back, the entire 10 to 20 picks was all wide receivers, it seemed like. Uh, it was it was bizarre. It was crazy. It was absolutely insanity. Uh, but maybe so some of these guys are going to work out. But like even the Falcons select a wide receiver, you know, a big jump ball guy in the red zone. I mean, can't you find some of these guys in the National Football League? But again, I guess you don't want to pay for these. You don't want to pay premium dollar, you know, for these types of guys. But I guess you look at Odell Beckham, you know, you look at uh, Stefan Diggs being so successful. You look at the Buccaneers offense, I guess you look at it, you know, Devontae Adams, Tyreek Hill, and wide receivers now, I mean, wide receivers are the way of the NFL, they are the way of the future, you know, quarterbacks are still pretty important, but linebackers have completely gone by the wayside, safeties are no longer important, it's all about wide receiver, wide receiver, wide receiver, and I wonder, like, the, the I wonder who's going to zag, everybody's going in one way. Um, it's certainly interesting, but listen, the Giants end up getting two bookend pieces. You, the Giants should just quietly build their team of linemen um, on both sides of the line of scrimmage, and then they should sign, you know, a couple of you know um, wide receivers cheap, and just have a really solid foundational team of running the football and playing defense and winning games in that way.